Okay, so um, these are the equations of the pair functions that we will be doing in this lesson, okay? So we already did quadratics. You know what the plus or minus does, reflection. Uh-huh. A either makes it tall and skinny and wide. H value, left and right. K value, up and down. Okay, so cubics look the same, except instead of a squared in the equation, there's a cube in the equation. Um, square roots, instead of a squared or a cubed, you're going to have a vinculum, um, a radical, whatever you want to call it. And then for absolute value, instead of a radical, you're going to have absolute value bars. Okay, but the A, the H, the K, the plus or minus, all of those things still do the same things and are in the same position. Okay, so let's talk about transformation of functions. Y equals negative X cubed. Okay, that's my parent function. I know the parent functions already. Again, in this lesson, you should have already came into this lesson knowing what the parent functions were like. Okay, so negative two comma negative eight, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, two, eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plot those wonderful points on my graph. Okay, and I'm gonna notice that there is a negative in front of the x cubed and i know that the negative is a reflection across the x-axis so what i do know is that top point is eight spaces above the x-axis so to reflect it what i'm going to do is i'm going to move it eight spaces below the x-axis right one comma one is one space above the x-axis so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move it one space below the x-axis that middle point is on the x-axis so i'm going to go ahead and leave it right there okay so just we'll pulsate there. The next one, negative one comma negative one is below the x-axis, so I'm gonna move it one space above. And a negative two comma negative eight is negative eight spaces is below, so I'm gonna move it up. So boom, look at us. We have a reflection, ladies and gentlemen, across the x-axis. And remember when you're making a table, what you're gonna go ahead and do is that you're only going to change which values? You're only changing the y values. If they were negative, they become positive. If they're positive, now they become negative. Okay? We're going to talk about your domain and your range. Oh, my gosh. My students hate domain and range. Okay? Um, but your domain are the x values that are covered. And so you're looking at the arrows from left to right. How far does that function go? Well, all real numbers. It's going to go on from negative infinity to positive infinity. So I say that that's all real numbers is my domain. Now, my range, on the other hand, is sometimes different. Uh, but for this one, thankful enough that it's also going to be all row numbers because those arrows are going to keep going up forever and ever, and they're going to keep going down forever and ever. They're going to keep getting wider forever and ever, and from the left and to the right. So that's what my domain is. Okay. We're going to get those out of here. So let's do an absolute value function. So the parent graph, always graph the parent graph first. Negative 2, comma 2, negative 1, comma 1, 0, comma 0, 1, comma 1, 2, comma 2. Okay? So this is what the absolute value function looks like. You, again, you should know your parent functions already. Okay? You should be very comfortable with your parent functions already. So what I notice is that my function that I'm doing is y equals absolute value of x minus 2. So that minus 2 is inside of the absolute values. So that's an h value, just like when we were doing the quadratics, how it's inside of the parentheses is an h value. Inside of the absolute values is an h value. So that's a minus 2. So remember that the h value kind of works opposite. So I'm going to go right two spaces. So I'm going to take every point and move it right two spaces. Boom. This is my transformation. And remember that when you're making the tables, it's the x value that gets moved two spaces. Plus two, plus two for all my x values. Okay? So look at you. You just graphed a transformation. The domain. All real numbers because that graph is as wide and it's going to keep getting wider and wider forever and ever. It's going to keep going far left, keep going far right from negative infinity to positive infinity. So I say all real numbers. My range is y is greater than zero. Why is it y is greater than zero, Ms. Bernard? I'm so glad that you asked because the lowest point that that little red tip hits is on the zero on the y-axis, right? And so the highest it's gonna hit, those arrows are gonna go on forever and ever, so it's gonna go into infinity. So I'm gonna say y is greater than or equal to zero. 
So that's our transformation. Let's do a square root. So I'm gonna y equals the square root of x and then outside of the square root is a minus two okay so this is kind of tricky because if it was if that minus two was under the square root that would be an h value but because it's not under the square root it's outside of the square root that's actually going to be a k value and we already learned that the k value moves us up or it moves us down in this case it's a minus two so it's going to move us down two spaces but the first thing that i need to be able to do is i need to be able to graph the pair function we keep doing this. You should know your parent functions already. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, 16, comma 4 is way off the graph, so I'm not going to bother with that. So that's my parent function right there, right? So now I know that that's a k value, not an h value, because it's not inside of the square root. It's outside of the square root, so it's a k value. So it's, I'm going to move everything down two spaces. And voila, there you have it. You have a wonderful parent function, I mean, a transformation of a parent function. Um, so again, all that I do for my tables here is I change the Y value for my table. So each of my Y values um, from the original parent function are gonna be minus two. So zero minus two, the, the one minus two is negative one, two minus two is zero. 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, and that's how I get my table if I wasn't looking at a graph. Domain. Now remember, your domain is how far left and how far right. Um, so looking at that red graph, how far left that it goes is 0, okay? How far right it goes is forever and ever because there's an arrow there, so that means it's going to keep going to all the way to positive infinity. So I'm going to say x is greater than or equal to 0. My range, how low can you go? And then how high can you go, right? So my range is going to be negative 2 um, is the lowest that it goes. And the highest that it's going to go is forever and ever because of that arrow. So y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Notice that that matches with that negative 2 that's in the, the function. That's not a coincidence. That's always going to happen. Okay. So looking at your domain and range, I get a little visual. So that's my left boundary. Uh, for my domain is zero and then it goes on forever and ever to infinity so i know x is going to be greater than or equal to zero get out of here for my range the lowest i'm gonna go is negative two the highest i'm gonna go on is forever and ever i forgot i had put those little animations in there i'd be better than i think i am sometimes 